turn my camera off because I know you can't see me. Hold on. I'm not going to include the camera. Include video now. I'll include the... Expectations with a former coach. Uh, no, no, not really. Carlos, you lived that in your baseball career. What's this world like? Oh, it's extremely exciting. You know that if you perform, you will get the call. Oh, snap. We've got a developing story here. JP, what are you hearing? I'm checking the numbers, I'm talking to my sources and my scouts, and they're all telling me, hey, this could actually work. Most of us mere mortals, when we were that age, we were barely chewing gum and walking at the same time, let alone playing the hardest game there is. That Sammy's pumping up mentally here to adapt. That's what good players do. That dream of getting the big leagues is now becoming reality with that one phone call. Wow, I'm playing for the LA Dodgers. Wow, that's crazy. Continuing our MLB Draft Day 2 wrap-up coverage, back to the prospect that we mentioned before the break. There was some surprise, even some criticism of the front office over how early he went off the board. Jonathan Mayo, what do you think of this pick? Man, I don't think any of us saw this one coming. This uh, definitely feels like a, a reach to me. You know, I had him more as a, a day three kind of guy. Uh, there was a split camp. A lot of scouts disagreed whether he's better as a pitcher or better as a hitter. Uh, I'm guessing to him, but uh, this made me scratch well, my head a little bit for sure. All right, Jonathan Mayo, thanks. Uh, what about you, Jim Callis? Was this a head scratcher or the reach of the draft, as some of the other analysts have suggested? Yeah, you know, I, I talked to somebody with the team, and they look, they're, they're excited to get this guy. This is a guy they really want. And the two points the club made to me were one, you know, this whole debate, is he a hitter, is he a pitcher? You know, what are you gonna do with him? You know, there was a lot of confusion. This team isn't confused. This team feels like he's, a, he's got very good potential as a hitter and as a pitcher. They may even try to play him both ways. And they also, they felt like there were a couple other teams that were starting to sniff around this guy. And, you know, this isn't the NFL or NBA draft where you can trade down to get a guy you want. If you want a guy, you have to take him because there, there's no trades. And, and they felt like if they didn't take him where they did, somebody else was going to get them. And they just absolutely did not want that to happen. Jim Callis, we appreciate the time. Thanks. Rolling along with the podcast and back on the prospect who's divided the scouting community, I am opposed to this belief that he went too high. I really think he could be a steal here. This is a guy who's got so much development left to do. He's got so much potential. And I think all the scouts who are down on him think, oh, he's not a... A player receives the check-in from one of his coaches.
after this first game, I gotta add it in. So now here is Corbin Carroll looking to put them ahead early with this at bat. Here comes the one two. A swing and he pops him up on the infield and the infield fly rule will be in effect here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I gotta adjust something. on the CIO. I need a no PCI. Six and seven here to start the home half of the second. Hit back toward the mound. Reined in. And that's the first down. Next up, Joe Randolph. Yeah, I gotta turn that off, but I forgot. No, I'm on the edge. No, I'm on 
the chain of the, you know, the bad end of stuff. Down last time up. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result as his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I gotta figure that out because I'm gonna look stupid. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they can certainly roll to. He said, here's the 0-1. Oh, and this at-bat is quickly moving from bad to worse. It's 0-2 now. And a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. That's not an at bat. He's going to look back on him. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And next to bat will be the outfielder, Barry Iswaldo. Hit out towards second. Fielded cleanly. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. So now into the box is Joe Randall, struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Matt. He got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher work a little bit harder. Carroll is there now. And he's... Ready now is Drew Ellis. No hits to this point. Oh, double play? Okay. Oh, it's on the ground a second. Did he get his double play? One there. Relay to first in time. And just like that, this side is... Now into the box. Joe Random flew out last time up. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Swing and a ball hard hit toward deep right. McCarthy is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. Ow. And this evening's contest comes to a close. 5-3, the final. The Drillers wrote an important sixth inning to victory in this one. Rafael Lopez claims the win out of the pen, his first. Juan Chavez hammers down the save, his first of the year. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and our entire crew on Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to the new website, The Show. Minor League Baseball now on The Show. Now to the plate, Corbin Carroll. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Sent on the ground out to second. On the first, and there's one gone here to start the second. So here's the cleanup hitter, Joe Random. First pitch coming, here it is. To first, scooped up. Go and hard, go hard, go hard. Self for the out. Three. Next to stand in is Joe Random, grounded out in his last at bat. First pitch on its way. Committed to that one a bit too soon as it locks him up for strike one. Not much he could do with that one. Tied him up in knots. Down the left field line and deep. Parsons aboard here at first with nobody out. Swung on in the dirt, and that's a strikeout. 
That was some nice execution on that pitch. Spotted it nicely down around the box. Stepping in once again is Randall, 0 for 2 on his line thus far. And it's fouled away. The wind up and the 0 1. A great job of changing speeds there. It's 0 and 2. See, it's tough when your team is being held scoreless on the scoreboard. He was trying to put him on the board. But we'll have to press pause as that strike three to retire the side. So a runner at first now with one away. And now we'll see Corbin Carroll dig into the plate. On the ground to second base. This could be two. He's got it. To second for one. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Nothing doing here this half. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Joe Randall. He went down on strikes in his last at-bat. Yeah, Matty, big time K last time up, and it's been a tough series for him so far. You can tell he's just not seeing the ball off this team. Let's see if he can make an adjustment right here. And yeah, boy, they're really giving him fits inside now as he can't get extended there, and it's 0-2 now. Into the corner and slicing foul. Another 0-2 coming. Popped up. Perdomo is there, and folks are starting to head for the exits now. Two gone here. And tonight's ends as a 3-0 shutout win. The Amarillo Sot took the lead in the fourth and held on until the end. the game that double-A is where you start to see the breaking balls that are really set apart from what you've seen before. And that can be a big challenge for a young hitter. Absolutely. And I think, you know, when you, when you think back to, um, you know, some of the pitchers that I face, some of the guys that you face in the big leagues uh, for five, six, you know, ten years, you think, I, mean, I saw him somewhere. Yeah, it was double-A because when you <laughs> see most prospects of any organization, they pretty much go to double-A just to get themselves over that hump and get ready for the league. You had a breakout season at the double-A level yourself. What was it about you that enabled you to have that kind of campaign? Uh, I was very confident. And I, I thought, you know, if the confidence could just stay with me consistently, which is very hard to do at any level of baseball because it's a, it's a game of failure, uh, I just try to be consistent every night, whether it was, you know, defensively, offensively. Um, you know, just bring something to the table. Go home with something where you felt good, and I didn't have to think about that game uh, when I went to sleep.
welcome into this presentation of minor league baseball from the double-a central tonight next here is drew ellis he takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away sent on the ground out to second reined in on to the shortstop at second but it's thrown away going to score now all the way from first on a play that was nothing short of a disaster all the way around. So next to hit is Joe Central. The first pitch coming. Here it is. Now a swing and a miss. Took something off that one and it's strike one. Grounded weakly down the line toward third. But this will wind up a foul ball, strike two. Hoping to send him packing, pitch on its way. And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. Didn't look to me like that was much of a pretext. Now to bat, Joe Cintron struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Matt. He got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher work a little bit harder. Swing and a miss, and he's in trouble now. 0-2. Hey, watch out. This hitter's got one thing on his mind. And that is swung on and missed. He's down on strikes. And the first two are retired here to begin inning number four. Now it'll be Ben Deluzio. He went down looking in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot. Uh, we'll have to leave it there as the play is made. Leading off the inning, it'll be Joe Cintron. As they'll look to spark the offense and even things up. Good deception on the slider there as he's way out in front. Hey, it's tough when your team is being held scoreless on the scoreboard. He was trying to put him on the board with a swing like that one. Behind 0-2 now. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. something happen. They're down to their final out here in the ninth. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Throw on to second for the force and the ball game is over. This evening's game finishes. 2-0 the final score. The Sun Eagles jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. Jackson Goddard earns his first win of the season. Marcus Solbach only completed two innings and is charged with the loss. stars are on display as minor league. Blake Walston, lefty. And stepping in, Jake McCarthy. They lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. And now pitch on the way. And a fastball close, but ultimately ruled a ball. 1-0. Fellas, you take a look at these guys as they get onto the field for the bottom of the first here this afternoon. It's been a slow start as they come in with just one win from their oh, first five ball games. 2-0 now. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll take You're it to the bag himself for the out. Next to hit is Geraldo Perdomo. And he's looking to get it going. Off to a bit of a slow start this year. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Parsons is right there as he'll put it away without much problem for the second out. Digging in next, Barry Giswaldo. He's hitting 333 in the series, two for six. Here's the first pitch. Swing and a ball hit. 
it softly on the ground. Throw to first beats him easily, and the side is retired. And inning in the books, no score here on the show. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and that'll give way to the third baseman, Drew Ellis, fouled away. It's going to be back to some serious T work if he can't put that pitch in play right in his wheelhouse. Hard hit towards center. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Dan, he took that right back in his face right there. Exactly what you're trying to do. Middle cut, though. Are you a little concerned? Yeah, that's a case of a ball being right down the middle. As a pitcher, you want to work the corners and stay out of that middle part of the zone, and he paid for it right there with a solid base hit. Comes in after a day of rest yesterday, so we'll see if it did him any good. And he fouls this one off. The 0-2 home. In the dirt here. Good job there as the count goes to one and two. Hit in the air down the right field line. Here's another one, two. Lifted in the air out to center two, two, field. Two. Rincon will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the runner will have to head back to first. Next, it'll be Corbin Carroll. And he's looking to get it going. Off to a bit of a slow start this year. And this will kick off the base of the wall. The relay throw. Ah, oh, man, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. Oh, and he is in there with an RBI triple. Well, there's one way to get our first one of the game across. Good hustle there on an RBI triple, and they're in good shape to possibly make it do nothing with another base hit here. Oh, come on. I didn't want to do that. 